Hey everybody! Oh, I am shivering a little bit. I am down in my office and it is estimated to be 30 below here tomorrow, which is just crazy. Um, so I'm down in my office and it's just a little bit chillier than it is up in the rest of the house, which is okay. I have a blankie and if you see Ben come in, it's because he's going to bring me some slippers, but I'm super, super happy to be here with you tonight for our Team Firefly meet and greet. So first of all, my name is Amanda Freeland. I am a coach on this team. I love this team so much. I'll tell you a little bit more about me in just a second, but first I wanna tell you what to expect. So tonight we are going to do some live interviews with four coaches on our team. And they're going to tell you a little bit about um, things they've overcome and just different things with coaching, what their fears and hesitations were with being a part of this team, how they overcame that, and how their life is now better because of this team. So I appreciate, first of all, the fact that you're here. So if you're here and you're watching, it's because someone invited you. And that means someone sees some potential in you. Maybe you don't even know what that potential is yet. Maybe you don't see it in yourself, but someone who invited you to be here sees a spark of potential in you to be a part of this team for some reason. Now, we really invite people to be a part of this team for one of two reasons, and a lot of times reason one turns into reason two. So reason one is to be a coach to yourself, coach of self. And that means people who we talk to, people who come across our lives that we just really, really see they need to coach their own health and wellness. And coaches get the best results. We know that. We've seen proof of that. People who choose to become a part of this team ultimately end up being more accountable than anyone else that we work with because of everything else that goes with being a part of this team. It's it's the best accountability and the best motivation being surrounded by a huge group of women all trying to do the same thing, which is live happy and healthy and well and having some fun along the way. So the first reason we invite people to our team is to be a coach to themselves, to have more accountability to their own health and wellness. The second reason we invite people to this team is if we see or meet someone who we feel has potential to inspire other people. So you can see why reason one could quickly turn into reason two because if you're taking care of yourself, that's instantly inspiring. There are so many, millions, millions and millions, hundreds of millions, literally hundreds of millions of people in just the United States alone that are severely overweight or obese. We can help change that. By you taking the first step to be a coach to yourself and to take care of your own self-care, you automatically become an inspiration to someone else who might not see how they can do it. You have people in your circle or maybe even two degrees of separation outside of your circle, friends of your friends who you can help, who I will never meet right? Who my friend Sarah, who you're going to meet in a few minutes, who she will never meet. She won't be able to help them, but you could, right? If you start by being a coach to yourself, then we invite people to be a coach to others. There's an opportunity with Beachbody to help other people live healthy and well. You can make some extra income, get a great discount on some awesome products, and be surrounded by an amazing community of people, like I said before, who all want the same thing, to help end the trend of obesity and who want other women to live happy and well and fit so they can live their best life too. So if you're here, whoever invited you saw potential for one of those two coach roles and we hope that you really enjoy listening to the coaches that you'll hear from tonight and that you hear something from each coach, maybe even one thing from each coach that you hear from that sparks something in you that lets you know that yes, you belong in this team and yes, you can do this too. And yes, you deserve to live happy and healthy with great motivation and accountability from a great team of women. So a little about me and then we'll go ahead and invite our first coach on who will be Sarah Morrison. Um, so I have been a coach for over seven years 
And when I was first asked to coach, um, I didn't even know what that meant. Um, and I honestly was a new kindergarten teacher and just decided for myself that I knew I wanted some Shakeology at a discount. And that's that's kind of how I approached it was I love Shakeology. I love how I feel. I love how it's changed how I feel from the inside out. Um, I'm eating less crap, so naturally I started losing some weight. And when I was told I could get it for a discount, I was like, yep, sign me up. I didn't even ask any other questions because as a new kindergarten teacher, I'm not sure if you know, but we don't exactly make a ton of money, right? So I started getting a discount. I think that's been going to get my slippers. My toes are so cold. Um, and then a couple years later, I was actually at my school and my friend Sarah, who you'll meet here in a minute, came in and to my classroom. She was at school for some reason that day and we had had a meeting earlier in that day at school and um, someone from, I worked at a charter school and someone from corporate had been there. Yay, Ben! Thank you. Slippers. Um, someone from corporate came in and was talking about a leadership program that they had and that they were looking for candidates. And I'm sitting there like, like raising my hand, like, pick me, pick me, because I knew I have always had this feeling inside of me like, OK, life is great. This is fine. But I want to do like, what's next? What's more? What can I learn? What can I do? How can I not like advance or move up? right? Like I've never been worried about, oh, how high can I go in my career? But like wanting to help more, wanting to do more and feel more productive and more successful, I guess just as a way, you know, for myself to feel good with what I was doing, which I think everyone really wants, right? So that person left from corporate, nothing ever happened. Sarah came in and I was telling her that I was frustrated and she's just shaking her head at me. And I was like, why are you shaking your head at me? And I think she said something like, I want to hit you over the head with a wiffle ball bat. And I was just like, oh, okay. And she's like, will you please just do this new coach training? Our, the trainings on our team are free. They're created by the other successful coaches on our team. And it was um, the pilot of a brand new training. And I said, okay, listen, I'll try it. So I was this person, you guys. I said, okay, I'll try the training. But if it doesn't work, just don't, don't ask me. Or maybe I even said bother me, which which seems funny now, but don't even bother me about this coaching thing anymore. So I tried it, tried the training, and I love learning and I love trainings, which maybe sounds weird, but something clicked for me right away that this is an opportunity not just not just to help people with their health and wellness, but to connect with real people in a real way beyond their health and wellness, to help them see how health and wellness fits into their life. I really like on our team, it's kind of a theme, um, helping people get past their excuses. And that's a big deal to be able to talk straight with someone and be a friend, but also be that coach that they need in their life. Because a lot of people do not have someone cheering them on at all, ever. I know a lot of people who don't have a single person in their life telling them, you can do this, you can be healthy, I believe in you. That's where we come in. Sometimes spouses are the worst at that, sadly. And and that's tough. So then who gets called in? Coaches get called in, right? So um, from there, from that first training that I did, I just kind of ran with it. And I went to our Beachbody Summit, which is our annual gathering of coaches. And I fell in love with the company and the idea of the opportunity even more. And then getting more involved with a team, um, you know, things were kind of back and forth with me. I had my own team for a while and, and things just never felt right. And then after this past summer, we went to Beachbody Summit. And just this past summer in 2018, I was in Indianapolis where it is again this year. Yay! And Sarah and I were talking and she had this brilliant idea because of the story about the fireflies, which I hope you've watched. Sarah's posted about that. She had a brilliant idea to revamp the team and start fresh and bring new energy. And ever since then, our whole team vibe feels different and fun and amazing things have been happening. So without further ado, <laughs> that was a lot of information. I would like to bring on our first coach interview of the night, which is Sarah, and I see that she is on. So here we go. Hello. 
Let's make it. <laughs> I'm in my bathroom. Yay. I just <laughs> um, it's been a little crazy here tonight. We've got a Canvas Strap Pro and big uh, announcements on social media. And, whoa, crazy. Um, that was quite an intro. I was listening and you're like, without further ado, I'm like, okay, here we go. <laughs> I know. Well, I'm live on my phone, so, so I, can't, I can't. Like I could text, text, but it makes it harder. harder. Nope, that's fine. Do you have, Sarah, do you have headphones? Oh, shoot. I just, I just hear, hear some feedback. feedback. <laughs> yeah, I don't have them upstairs. I can go get them. <laughs> okay, I can keep chatting. Okay. All right. So Sarah went to grab some headphones. If you hear that feedback, that's why. Because when I'm talking, it's coming back through the speaker on the phone. <laughs> so she'll put my headphones in and that will help. Hold tight for just a second. Are you just waiting for me? Hey. Hi. Oh my God, I look ridiculous. Woo. <laughs> there. Well, it worked though. There's no feedback now, which is awesome. Okay, yay. Hello. Oh, Diane is saying we're frozen? I think we were frozen because I came up here and I was like, she's not oh. talking. Um, yeah. Because I was talking and it was just constant feedback, and I was like, now I just sound like a robot. So oh, it's kind of funny. It was an obvious okay, so, person. Yeah, we're okay. We're back, Diane. Hi, Megan. Um, okay, so welcome to Sarah. Welcome officially to the meet and greet. I know that was sort of impromptu welcome without further ado. Um, so, Sarah is ultimately the creator of the fireflies and we love the story behind team fireflies and all the love and energy and time that you give to this team and everyone on this team and just thanks, the leadership so that you have for oh, what, what we're on a mission to do so we always love hearing from sarah <laughs> if you don't know her that's just a little bit about her but sarah why don't you so i know usually we dive right into questions why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself first for anyone who might be on that's new well, I'm in my bathroom in a bathrobe, and um, I love that you can coach anywhere because it's about just connecting with people and being real, and uh, that's what's happening right now, but I'm a mom of two kids, six almost, and four, and a, a wife to a firefighter or paramedic, and I used to be in broadcast journalism and kind of fell into fitness and work at a health club and also found Beachbody and have really... Um, changed my whole mindset and my health because of fitness. So I love sharing it. Awesome. Fun to know a little bit more about you. Okay. So question number one for the night, when you were first introduced to the idea of Beachbody coaching, what were your initial hesitations or fears? I, um, just the fear of the unknown, like we're so scared of the fear of the unknown. And sometimes when you don't know everything, you make up um, answers that aren't even real things. So I think I did a lot of that. But I would say like my biggest fear was like people like thinking, oh, she's a beach body coach. And like sometimes that fear <laughs> still creeps in. And I'm like, why is that a fear? Like I'd much rather be a beach body coach than like, oh, she's a couch potato, you know, or <laughs> some of these other things. And I'm like, I'm actually oh, I'm really awesome. I'm proud of it because I love that people know that I'm, I'm passionate about a lot of things. One of them is health and fitness and people believing that they can do stuff that they're telling themselves right now they can't do. Um, but basically, you know, I wasn't this eloquent in my thoughts, not that I'm eloquent now, but back then I was not. And it was more like, oh my God, I want people to think like I'm a Tony Horton groupie or like I'm obsessed with Sean T or something like that. And, um, ultimately I decided to join because I'm like, well, I like the products. I use them. Um, I might as well get a discount. And I kind of felt like I was going to be left out. So that is what got me in the door. And then I was just exposed to this community that really, truly did change my mindset. You know, you don't have to be obsessed with Tony Horton to be a beach body coach at all. You just have to be obsessed with like believing in yourself and knowing that, you know, life is meant to unlock more potential. 
you know, it's not, I was someone who was like, oh, I graduated, you know, I don't have to do anything else. Like, I, I kind of thought like, life was just like the same old, same old from there on out. And um, this has really shown me that life should truly always be a journey to unlock more and more potential within yourself. And I have done that in fitness and Beachbody has been the reason because I got exposed to this community where people think this way and it brainwashed me and I'm happy about it. <laughs> good, good, positive peer pressure brainwashing. <laughs> right. We need pressure in our lives or else nothing changes. So find some positive pressure. Don't find negative pressure. <sighs> find positive yeah. pressure. Yeah. I mean, it's so true. We hear all the time. We're, we're the, the sum of the five people we spend the most time with. So if you think of the five people in your life who you spend the most time with, what are they like? And essentially you're like them, even if you don't want to be, or even if you see yourself on a different path, who you surround yourself with really does matter. So Sarah, a little impromptu here, what you said, you know, you really feared like, Oh, she's a beach body coach, but really it'd be worse to be like, Oh, I'm a couch potato. I love that. You said that. But what would you say to somebody who's maybe watching, who's thinking like, yeah, I totally don't want people to be like, oh, you're a beach body coach. What would you say? I would say that you're, people can label you at any time in your life. And um, people are out there labeling you. Even if, hey, April, even if you think they're not. Like if you try to live your life not being labeled or like in some kind of group, like that's not a very fun life. Like just, you know, go find your tribe is like all the t-shirts and stuff like that say, um, you know, I think you got to push past that fear because when you have fears like that, they can stop you from doing a lot of things. Like maybe you never go to a group fitness class because you're like, Oh, I don't want to be one of be one of those people in the capri pants going to group fitness. Like fears like that can <laughs> hold you back from things that are like really awesome. Or I don't want to be one of those people who signs up for like a bowling league, like, Oh, a bowling league. Like we can make so many judgments and ultimately judgments stop us. They don't hurt other people. They stop us. They hurt us. So that's what I would say. And I just want to add in here. I just saw a comment from Connie that she would love to do this, but she said it's too expensive. And so Connie, I can only speak from my personal experience and opinion. So please know that that's where it's coming from. I did have an objection about the cost of Shakeology. I was making $300 every other week. I was working part-time at a health club because um, I just switched careers. And I knew I liked Shakeology. And I was that is a lot of money when you're making $300 every other week, you know? And so that was another motivator to get a discount on Shakeology. And now... I'm like, gosh, I would be spending my money on this stuff anyways. Like Shakeology is my breakfast every day. Instead of me buying breakfast on the way in or buying food from the grocery store and then not using the stinking food and the food goes to waste and I end up buying breakfast, a cinnamon roll from McDonald's anyways. Um, so in my opinion, I feel like it saves me money. I didn't think that at first and I will admit that. But now I'm like, I would buy this stuff anyways. And when you compare the integrity and what goes into just Shakeology, for example, compared to other shakes, it is drastically different. You are getting superfoods from around the world. If you would try to create this on your own, you would spend so much money and it would, you would have to devote your life to it. Like people devote their lives to this product. <laughs> um, but I remember I would go to the chiropractor and he was like, you need three vitamins, selenium, magnesium, and something else. Cause I was having all these back problems. And he put me on these vitamins to help. And just those vitamins were 80 bucks and it was three of them. So I just remember thinking that I'm like, oh, I can get so many vitamins and superfoods right here. And when you compare it and actually look at that, you'll see that it's amazingly cost effective for it. Um, but of course, like you have to decide. Sometimes I do... Well, never, I'm just going to stop there before I put too many opinions on people. That's just my story. <laughs> awesome. I'm glad um, you took the time to share that, to answer her question for sure. All right. right. So, oh, my gosh. And the value of what, like, and if it's something you would love to do and a price tag is holding you back, but you know it could make you a better person, like, I'm not just saying for Beachbody, I'm saying for anything in your life. Like, if you know you're desperate to travel, like, find a way to do that. If you know you're desperate to, like, take this course, you want to take it, but the price tag's well, you're worth it. You are worth investing in whatever you are passionate about because 
it's going to change your life and you're going to be so happy you did it. So just that. Okay. I should go. Yeah, no, it's not your turn though. <laughs> you have one more question, but I was just going to oh, ask you that. Like ultimately, no, ultimately at the end of the day, like when you're in your eighties, right, you won't look back and say, Oh, I regret that I did spend that money. Oh my because God. I, I don't deserve regret. to so be healthy. Grateful. Right. You might mm -hmm. look back though and say, man, I wish I would have taken the chance to see what could have happened if I had tried and found yes. a way. Right. And yes. there's always wiggle room. You know, I do feel like we used to be in a really bad spot and a lot of debt and we made Shakeology work because I, I instantly could feel how it was changing my health. And I know that sounds weird, but like I said at the beginning from the inside out, I could feel how I was becoming healthier and I started losing weight and and that was proof enough to me. And then the actual physical proof of our yearly annual checkups at the hospital with actual blood draws and our numbers get better and better every year when usually mm -hmm. as you get older, they get worse. That's proof right there. Anyway, yes. So I'm glad we talked about that. But Sarah, one more question for you before we have our next person come on who will be Tracy. Um, Yay. What, tell us like your, your top three favorite things that coaching has done for you or added to your life or things that you just love? Oh my gosh. Friendships. I've met so many people online. I love saying we've met online. Um, gosh, I just did uh, a post about this woman, Kristen, who I met because I'm a coach and I just love her story. I love her. I can't wait to meet her someday. Um, it's changed my mindset. I truly feel like anything is possible. I feel like I've found a connection to something higher in this world, like a more spiritual, um, fulfilling relationship because coaching led me to that. Cause I started doing personal development. I started exploring like just different ways of seeing the world and like ways to tune into my own happiness. Like I read this quote this morning in my book that happiness creates happiness. Like success doesn't create happiness. A new house doesn't create happiness. A car doesn't create happiness. Happiness creates happiness. And we can tap into that at any moment. And I just feel so empowered knowing that. And oh, Kristen's on. And um, <laughs> I, I um, am in the best shape of my life and I'm 36. I thought I was 37 for the past six months. So I was really excited to find out I'm only 36, <laughs> but I'm in the best shape ever in um, – running half marathons faster. Like I'm just signing up for things that are adventurous and I believe in myself. So I it can freaking do it. And our finances, I never thought about coaching as a way to make money. Um, I thought of it as a way for me to like have Shakeology, um, maybe make a few commissions here and there. That'd be nice if I could pay for my Shakeology and it's well surpassed that. And we don't have to stress about money. And I'm incredibly grateful for that. And I also know that that is possible for everyone. There's no limit to that. And if people want that and believe they can have it, this is a great avenue to do it and they'll get it. Awesome. Oh my gosh. So if you're watching, go ahead and send some hearts up for Sarah. That was so great. Thank you so much for being on. We appreciate Yay. your time. And my pleasure. I appreciate you. I appreciate you doing this. Amanda Freeland is the freaking de director of education, does so much stuff for our team. <laughs> And we appreciate her so uh, much. So, okay. Goodbye. Yay. Go team fireflies. All right. Yay. Bye friend. All right. Awesome. So we're going to try the last time we did a live meet and greet, we couldn't get the next person on. So we had to stop and start again. If that happens, please jump back in and join us. But, oh, yay. Look at all those hearts. So we are going to go ahead and um, look for Tracy, who is our next coach. And... Let's see. I'm Tracy. I hope you're ready. So I went to add you and let's see if you can add. I think you have to accept it. Hi. Yay! Hi. It worked. <laughs> I feel like I'm a pro with this it. now. High five. Woo! <laughs> Virtual high fives. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so hi. hi. So the last meet and greet, Tracy. Oh my gosh, the poor lady, <sighs> the poor coach who was supposed to be on next. It, it just didn't even work out, and she didn't even end up being on. So we need to reinvite her next time. Um. Anyway, we're super happy that you're here and that that worked. Yay! I know Sarah, right? Yay. Um, Tracy, 
from the first time I met you, I've always thought you're just one of the most positive, happy people that I'd ever met. And then I heard your story and I was like, I would have never guessed that. So I know that we're asking two questions, but Tracy, would you please just take a couple minutes and tell your version of your story of, you know, just your health journey? Do you mind sharing a little bit sure. of that first? No. Yeah. Um, so in 2009, I woke up. Um, on St. Patrick's Day, wasn't feeling well at all, ended up in the hospital. I ended up having diverticulitis, which I didn't know that I had. They said I had a very high threshold for pain, so I didn't um, recognize the symptoms. So that night, they had me on IVs, this, that, and the other. I ended up going, um, my diverticulitis actually perforated through my colon. I went into septic shock. I ended up in emergency surgery. I flatlined on an operating table for about 30 plus seconds. I don't remember anything. I don't have any visuals or anything like that that I could tell you that I saw. I ended up spending three months on a colostomy bag. I lost my appendix and a foot and a half of my colon. So um, if you know anything about a colostomy bag, you basically lose any ounce of your own vanity. I mean, you're literally, you have, you, you have a bag. Um, so kind of horrific, kind of something that makes you lose every possible thing that you can even remotely imagine. Um, three months after that, I had a reversal surgery, went through that, went off the bag. And then three months after that, I ended up getting a hernia and had to have another surgery to repair the hernia. Um, mind you, I had a three-year-old and a five-year-old at home. So, um, little girls at home. Um, I weighed about 245 plus pounds, um, working 60 some hours a week, did not take care of myself, did not put myself on my own to-do list, didn't even consider myself because I was so busy being a parent. So um, neglected every possible thing about myself for sure. Oh my gosh. Um, yes. Yeah, so not oh, stressful yes. at all, right? Just right. a little bit stressful. Oh my gosh. Okay. So yeah. if you're watching right now and you heard anything she just said and you have any excuses or hesitations about not working out because of time or you kind of just don't feel like it, I hope you hear what Tracy just said. And then I hope you reevaluate re your own excuses because we hear all the time, life can take a turn for the worse at any moment. But when we're taking care of ourselves, it's so much less likely and we're so much better able to bounce back faster, which is what I think, where I think I would guess where Tracy's story is going to go tonight. But um, of course, I can't put words in her mouth. So Tracy, why don't you first start by sharing with the people watching, what were your initial fears or hesitations about coaching? How was it introduced to you? And what was your initial reaction? So um, when it was first introduced to me, it was um, done by Kim Craney, who um, is one of my teammates and co-coaches. And um, I was like, are you kidding me? Like, this stuff is so expensive. I was in the process of going through a divorce. Um, again, talk about not having any time or anything like that. And it was when 21 Day Fix came out. And she's like, you got to try this pro program with me. You got to do this. You got to do that. And I'm like, this is like almost $200. I don't have this kind of money. And she's like, just try it. You can get your money back. You know, it's, you know, money back guarantee. If you hate it, you can return the whole bag and it'll be completely free. And so I was like, all right, you know, him and hard went back and forth. And I was like, screw it. I don't do anything for myself. It's not like I'm going out to the bars or I'm doing this or that. I'm not a party or drinker or anything like that. I'm like, all right, fine. I can invest a couple of dollars in myself and let's see where it goes. So, um, ended up doing that. And, uh, so three years later, I'm still into this. And actually, I have to show you guys something cool because Beachbody sends you super awesome oh. gifts. So this is my three-year gift that I got the other oh, day. So, yay. yeah. But you didn't know that Beachbody has a koozie for your <laughs> Shaco cup. So just a fun thing that you get in the mail. Well, so, I'm excited for um, My hesitations that. I were, um, I wasn't. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I didn't know that was the prize this year for, for you. Three. Yes. So when they start, right, I've been, super cool. I've been drinking Shakeology for like six or seven years, but they just started these yearly prizes. If you, you know, get your Shakeology yes. for one year, two years, one year, it was a big canister that you could put your whole bag of Shakeology in last year. Mm -hmm. What was last year? Another canister? Or, no, it was a Shake 
Oh, no, the first year was the golden scoop. Oh, the golden scoop. First year was the golden scoop. <laughs> yeah, right. second year was the canister. And then, so yes. I love that shakeup, and I'm looking forward to getting that now. So, <laughs> so I, I heard, so, Tracy, I heard hesitation to price, hesitation with time. I heard you say earlier you worked 60 hours a week, but that you didn't do anything for yourself at that point in your life. You were going through a divorce. And you were at 245 pounds and you had had all those health issues. Kim asked you, invited you to do this program, helped you work through those hesitations, and you said yes. So can you tell us how much, and you don't have to tell us exactly how much weight you've lost if you don't want to, but if you'd like to share, that'd be great. But can you tell us how else has your health benefited and what else do you love about being a part of this community? Sure. Sure. Um, I'll be honest, I'm between 55 and 60 pounds is where I sort of rotate between. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so I've learned that, obviously, as I'm gaining muscle and building my muscle, that my scale doesn't change as much. So that's a hard one to get into our own heads because we get on the scale and we all, always want to beat ourselves up about it. So learning to be okay with that number based on how I feel and how my clothes feel is huge. Um my Shaco is basically paid for now. So um, each month I, I barely even pay for my Shaco, which is amazing. Um, I'm not out to change my job because I really enjoy my job. And just overall my health. So I used to be super negative on myself, you know, always downplaying myself. My mindset was crappy. So um I'm much more positive about things and it rubs off on a lot of people. I hear that quite often, like you're positive and you help me out. And so that makes me feel really good. Um, my hair grows super fast. My fingernails grow super fast. <laughs> my skin is like perfect. I, like, right. Our hair is like crazy. Yeah, That's why it's always right? like this. <laughs> um, right. My skin is perfect. I don't use lotion and everybody's like, why is your skin so soft? I'm like, I drink Shaco and drink a lot of water. Um, and I show up for myself, right? which I mean, most of us, we don't show up for ourselves and we don't put ourselves on our to-do list. So for me, that's been the most important yeah. to know that it's not selfish for me to take 30 or 45 minutes. So even if it means I throw dinner in the oven and I tell my girls, Hey, the timer is going to go off, shut it off when it's done. And I can run downstairs. I can go do my workout and I'm still here and I'm still present. And it definitely carries over to them. They see it and they feel it. And my daughter goes and works out now just because she's like, what else am I going to do? So um, it makes a big impact on our kids as well. That's a huge impact. It is so, I feel like it's so tough in our society today to be healthy because we're a society of sitters, right? A lot of us, we sit at work, we sit in the car, we sit to eat, we sit on our phones, we sit at the computer, we're sitting all the time. And way, not even way back ago, long ago, not even that long ago, we were a society of movers, right? We walked a lot more. We had outdoor jobs, even indoor factory jobs. You were standing or moving around all day. And those calories from just that day-to-day -day general movement added up. So now we have to be the role models for our kids, which you're absolutely doing. If our kids see us working out because it's important and it's a part of our life, They'll just think, oh, it's what people do. They just work out. You have to work out in your day, right? That makes you healthy. That makes you mm -hmm. strong. Otherwise, what are we doing all day? We're just sitting. We're showing them that movement doesn't matter. And it really does. That's where a lot of these diseases and sicknesses are coming from because people are just so sedentary. We need to get up and move, it and move more. And by being a role model, you are changing your girl's whole future. So you should be super yeah. proud for that too. Big congrats to you on your weight loss, on your transformation in your life, on your dedication and motivation. And, you know, I just wanted to point out too that you said you're not in this to change careers. So some of us coaches have been able to change our career. We've made a career shift because of coaching. That doesn't mean you have to, right? Tracy's in this for her own self-care and her own motivation and accountability, but then also enjoys helping some other people month to month so she can have her Shakeology paid for. So she can be that inspiration and motivation to people in her life and to her friends and family. And that matters too, right? She loves her job and that's yes. great, but health and wellness matters no matter where you're at, right? 
everyone needs to move more. Everyone needs an inspiration in their life. And Tracy can't reach everyone out there. I can't reach everyone out there. That's why we need more people to be coaches because wellness really does matter and it really does change so much. Awesome. I know I just kind of ran away with it a little bit there. Tracy, <laughs> any, okay. any last thing you'd like to share? I'll tell you that through this in personal development, I've taught myself the ability to dream. Aww. I used to not dream um, at all. So I'm doing a dream board and actually looking at myself and where I want to go and what I want to do. I've taught myself to dream big, which I never did before. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Yay. So. Tracy, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for being on and for bringing such great energy and such an amazing story. I know people are going to connect to that and have an awesome night. You too. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. <laughs> Oh, she's so great. Okay. So next up we have Amanda. And so you heard from Sarah, who's been a coach for eight plus years. And then you heard from Tracy, who's been a coach for three years. And now you'll hear from Amanda, who um, is a newer coach on the team. Let's see. I'm bringing you on camera, Amanda. Ready or not. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? How are you? Yeah. Good. Good. <laughs> good. I feel like, like I'm not used to just seeing you with bangs. I feel like you have mastered the live video look because I've never seen you oh. look bad ever. This is not <laughs> fair. <laughs> I love you so much. I did not wash my hair today. Isn't that always how it happens? <sighs> yeah. Someone's like, your hair looks great. And I'm like, oh, thanks. <laughs> just hairspray. <laughs> I didn't wash it. Um, so, Amanda, I'm not sure if you heard me say before I added you, I was saying that Sarah's been a coach for eight years. Tracy, who was just on, has been a coach for three years. Can you share how long have you been a coach? Um, this September, October, November, December, January. Five months. Yeah. So pretty new to this, mm -hmm. right? And I love Amanda's story. And I love that she's Amanda F. And I'm Amanda mm -hmm. F. We kind of have this connection, I think, in that way. Um, but but no, for real. So Amanda, I know we have two questions to get to, but I'd, I'd really love just for the people who are watching tonight to be able to hear your story. And I know you shared a couple weeks ago on a, on a call we were on a little bit more about your story. Would you just share with us um, just from your college days till now, kind of what your transition has been? Um, sure. I, uh, I, was an athlete when I was younger and it was just something that came naturally, you know, and I, I hate to say that it wasn't like we had to try, but you know, just, just sometimes things come naturally to some people more than others. And so, um, you get used to being able to do things without having to try that hard. Um, and then as you get older and the more you want to do, you realize, oh, you know, maybe if I really push myself, I can, I can get better. And um, so you kind of go into life thinking that maybe things are always going to be that easy, especially when it comes to losing weight. I thought I knew, I know how to work out. I knew how to lift weights. And um, then comes marriage and then comes children and um, before you know it, you know, age is creeping up on you and so is the weight. And um, I had a series of injuries um, while I was an athlete, but then they continued into adulthood. And um, I think that was a, a little bit of a setback in addition to, you know, having children and just living life. And um, I got to a point where I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. So I bought my first beach body workout and um, I did insanity. And <laughs> <laughs> for your first workout, yeah. no big deal. Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> but you know, the way Sean T did his, does his workouts and his instructions, it was just like, it took me back to the days of doing sports, you know, and, and, and some of the drills that we used to do. So I really, really enjoyed working um, his programs, and then I tapped into a few other ones. So um, when I did that the first time, I lost 40 pounds, and I took up 
running. I found a new passion for running. Um, I did a lot that I never thought I could do. Um, and I was really proud of myself and I swore I'm never, I'm never putting that weight back on again. And, um, I kind of backed off a little bit, um, because insanity, that program was quite a commitment. It was a lot of time. It was really hard. So I think I really just, um, stuck to running, um, several days a week. That was my outlet. That's, that's what I did for myself. And so I put on a little bit more weight, but it wasn't, it wasn't 40 pounds, but, um, and then, um, I had just a, a freak kind of a trip slip up on a hill one summer evening and, um, ended up breaking my leg and tearing all the ligaments and all that jazz in my ankle. And it was devastating. I, I just can't even tell you how, um, that made me feel because, you know, here I was in my late thirties and I thought I'd been past all of those dumb sports injuries. And then something like that happened. And I remember thinking, maybe it's not that bad, you know, broken, broken bones heal. And to get the news of everything's torn, you have to have surgery. I mean, I just sobbed and I sobbed and, um, (sighs) that, that broke me. That just tore me right apart. I instantly thought I'll never run again. I'm never going to be able to do all the things that I thought I could do. And, um, I really got into a bad place over the next few years. Um, um, I had to go through the whole healing process and then, um, about a year after had to have all the hardware removed. So you're kind of, you know, back to square one. And, um, I had put on probably 50, 50 pounds around this time I was smoking, I was drinking. I just, I just didn't care. And I completely given up. I thought, what's the point? What's the point of even trying? Cause something else is just going to happen. And so, um, I was on depression medication. Um, and that really wasn't getting me out of my funk. I was just not happy. Um, I couldn't find any motivation to do anything. I didn't want to be around people. And um, I had three lively teenagers that kept me busy and they were a pretty good distraction. You know, you don't have to look at yourself a whole lot when you're we're busy taking care of other people. So um, I got into the point where I know I needed, I knew I needed to do something about the depression. So I talked with uh, my primary care. She was a nurse practitioner and she said I should try counseling. And it was one avenue that I'd never never done before. So I was willing to try anything. So um, a couple of visits with the counselor and I had my aha moment and um, I had realized that I had been making all these excuses for, you know, the last couple of years of what I couldn't do, why I couldn't do things instead of focusing on what I could do. And so once I changed my thinking and took baby steps on um, trying to get back into exercising. The more I did that, the the more confidence I built and um, the more the weight came off and the more people I met. And then somebody <laughs> asked me to be a coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Wow. I, I really seriously love your story, but I just want to go back and touch on a couple of things. You said when you're busy taking care of other people, it's really easy not to look at yourself, Mm -hmm. not to pay attention to yourself. How many moms out there do you feel like need to hear that? That just because you have kids doesn't mean you shouldn't stop and look in the mirror and say, how are you? Mm -hmm. Are you taking care of you? Yeah. Right? Yep. And it comes back to that, that graphic or that quote that we see all the time that if you don't take care of yourself, right, you can't pour from an empty cup kind of thing Mm -hmm. where you were running on fumes, Mm -hmm. right? You were, and I mean, I hope I'm not making an assumption, but I'm, and I'm sure a hundred percent sure you're a great mom, but don't you feel like at that point in your life, maybe you weren't as good of a mom as you are now? (laughs) You don't have to be nice. I was a hot mess. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I'm not. I'm trying not to make assumptions or be like, "Oh, I'm sure you were crappy yeah. because you weren't taking care of yourself." 
that's not the case, right? Yeah. There are a lot of really great quality moms out there yeah. who don't work out right now. But at the same time, if they were taking care of themselves and they were working out, they'd be even less stressed. They'd have even more energy. They'd feel even more confident. They'd have more patience. It's all of those things that come with it. And you have found all of those things, which I love. Mm -hmm. um, so Jennifer says, I remember feeling guilty initially taking time away from the kids when I would go work out or run. Yeah. So Jennifer, if, if you don't mind sharing um, to follow up with that, how do you feel now though? Oh, now. Great. I just bring them along. Yes. Mm -hmm. I love that. So I have a nine month old and I'm doing, we're doing transform 20 right now. And we put her in her walker tonight in the basement. She was running around as, as my husband and I did the workout. I don't feel bad that she wasn't getting our attention for that 20 minutes. Oh, is someone joining? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> but, but she'll grow up seeing us do that and seeing that fitness is an important part. So your kids, Amanda, have seen this big transformation in you. I'm sure they're super proud. So that led up to then you were meeting people, you were getting out more, you were feeling better. I always talk to people about that positive spiral, right? Mm -hmm. You start to feel a little better. So you do a little more. So you eat a little better. So mm -hmm. you feel even better than you do even more. And then you feel great. So you want to keep going because it feels good to feel good. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. So then what happened? Who, who talked to you about coaching? What, what were your initial um, fears and hesitations? Um, so I had known Sarah for quite a while and um, she, maybe she asked, she might've talked to me about coaching years ago when I had first done the beach body program, but um, talking to her again um, at the club, she just, threw it out there, you know, you've, you've got everything that we think um, a coach should have with personality and whatever. Anyway, she just asked. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Sarah can... can... Sarah's watching right now. She's probably like, oh my gosh, Amanda. <laughs> yeah. Um... She was probably like, you are such an inspiration. You've changed your life. You work so hard. You could help other people. Yeah, right? something, like something along, yeah, something <laughs> along those lines. Um, oh, funny. So I remember um, sending her an email and I had like a page of questions. <laughs> and uh, I just put it all out there, you know, everything that I was contemplating, anything that I was doubtful of. And she took the time and answered everything as best she could. And I said, yeah. 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 So, um, so what was, can you be specific maybe about one hesitation that you had that stands out in your mind of like, was there a fear you had about something or like a big hesitation? Um, yeah, uh, there was, um, there was the fact that I, I thought you had to, um, post on social media all the time. Absolutely was not comfortable with that. Um, I remember because what did you share about taking pictures of yourself? <laughs> um, I, I never took pictures of myself. I was the one behind the camera and that was, you know, when they did my first story, I don't, it was nearly impossible to find a before picture cause I did everything I could to stay out of those photos. And it was, it's really sad cause you look back at all the family memories and try to remember those moments and, everybody else is in the picture but me and um it's not really fair to my kids to to kind of leave that behind you know that there's not a whole lot but anyway but there will be now we'll get yeah forward, yeah right yeah because now what do you do all the time yeah i'm pretty pretty comfortable being in a picture or i make sure i'm in a picture because i i always think of that <laughs> you know like if something happened to me tomorrow i want my kids to have something to remember you know what mom looked like or see her smiling yeah. so I, I not to take that dark but <laughs> no yeah. I mean that's amazing there are so many people who cringe or hide or wrap their clothes around themselves in a picture or who can only be one certain way one certain look in every picture because their confidence just isn't there with how they feel about themselves mm -hmm. you know they they can't just like throw their arms up and be like, here I am. Yeah. Right. Which I feel like, so that might not be everyone's personality, but everyone should have the confidence to do that in a picture though. Mm -hmm. Right. So when you think about taking a picture of someone, 
they should be able to smile and say, okay, mm-hmm. not, not want to hide. Right. And that's a huge transformation all in itself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that is sad about your family memories, you mm-hmm. know, just thinking about where you must have been in your own confidence to not want to be in those pictures versus now being so happy and healthy. And I saw an amazing picture of your ass, <laughs> I think last week. And I was like, what? <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to credit lift and tread to part of that. Amanda, oh, yeah. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, I was going to so, say my biggest, oh, biggest number one fear, which is something that I continue to work on is judgment. Um, that was the one thing that was holding me back is what will people think? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I love, love, love that Sarah touched on this when she was on earlier and she said people are always judging you Mm -hmm. people have judgments of you on everything you do as a mom as a person at your work and if you are worried about being judged because you're a beach body coach that judgment's more on them than it is on you right they need to hold their own judgment on their own health and wellness being a part of this team is really awesome and fun and fulfilling and makes us better people and if they want to judge that they can but really there's not much to judge Right. Right. And yeah, yeah so, no one, no one's judging us as bad as we think they are. We, we you know, oh, exactly. it's how much, how we talk to ourselves. You know, we assume that yes. um, they're thinking all the horrible things that we're thinking. And um, I don't think most they, people are not. Most people are not. <laughs> right. <laughs> most people want to be inspired. I get messages quite often in my inbox on Facebook saying, I follow your post. Thank you for being so positive. I think there are more people in the world than we think that want to see happy people, successful, excuse me, successful, positive people doing something good and helpful. Mm -hmm. You know, there's enough negativity. We need more coaches to do more good and more positive. Mm -hmm. So to close out your interview here, what would you say the one or two biggest things for you, the biggest changes, you know, either mentally or physically have been with being a part of team fireflies? Um, Well, I can say in the five months that I have been a coach, I lost an additional eight inches. And so when they say that coaches get better results, it's true. (laughs) You can't really argue that one. Um, And then hands down, um, opening my eyes to the world of personal development. Never, never even heard of anything like that. Never considered it. Um, and all that was introduced to me when I said yes to becoming a beach body coach and that changed my life. Yay for book clubs. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yep. That's amazing. Personal development. I mean, it's like, gosh, it's like so many of these personal development authors say that if you're not growing and changing and moving forward in your life, then essentially you're just saying, I'm okay to be left back here. Like you're just okay to be okay. Mm -hmm. And actually what one of the authors said is if you're not getting better and improving, then essentially you're dying, Mm -hmm. right? Because yeah, we're all headed to the same place, but what kind of quality of life and mind and happiness do you want while we're going there? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the first time I went through my journey, I did it by myself and now having this community surrounding me, I can't ever picture something like that happening again. And I kind of wish now that I would have had that when all that other stuff happened, because I don't think I would have been able to get so down. You know, there's so much encouragement, yeah. so much community, so many people supporting each other and wanting to see everybody do well. Um, yes. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. <laughs> No, I mean, but that's such a great point now, Amanda, looking forward or for anyone who's watching who feels like they're in that spot in their life where they're depressed or going through a really bad accident or they feel like they can't work out. You went through all of that and you come out so much stronger. Yep. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time and for sharing your story. You're amazing. (laughs) And it's been so fun having you on this team. Knowing you in person is fun and having you on this team is fun. So we get the best of both worlds. Um, well, thank but you. Thank you so much. Well, Have thank you. Night. You too. I'm sure I'll see you tomorrow. Yes, you will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. Ah. Oh, 
I love this team so much, and I love all the women on this team. And isn't it awesome to hear how different everyone's life is, different places people are coming from, different stories. Oh, I love it so much. Okay, we have one more coach to be interviewed. We're, we're right on time. Her name is Gina, and we're going to hear from her last tonight. She'll be our last interview, then I'll wrap up with a few closing thoughts. So if you've been hanging in there with us, please stick around for Gina. And if you, let's see. All right, I'm going to go ahead and add her to the conversation. Hi, Gina. <laughs> oh. oh I can't hear anything oh no. <laughs> oh no is this does it cause feedback I do hear feedback I do hear feedback are your husband's home for time do they need to be do they need to be like this or I saw a cord I saw a cord yeah I have a cord that it plugs in but I can just hear I can't get the audio like I can't get the microphone to work. I don't know. You want to try it one more time? You want to try it one more time? Yeah, hold on. Okay. Okay. Ah. Can you hear me? <gasps> yeah. There's oh, feedback. great. See, second. Plug it in. I'm right there. <laughs> So um, I'll just be super honest. It's I don't know Gina that well. She's my friend. I know my friend Jackie really well. We've been coaches together for a while, and you're Jackie's coach, correct? So he yes. invited you to the well, team. Yes. Jackie invited me. Yeah. Yes. So um, she said that you have a great story, which I'm excited to hear. I don't know that much about it. So why don't you just start by telling us a little bit about you? Where are you from? Um, anything fun about your life or anything fun about your own story? Maybe you heard some of the other ladies share leading up to that coaching invite. Any pieces of your story that you'd like to share with us? Sure. Um, I, I work in advertising with the um, same industry as Jackie. And uh, we worked together um, years ago and just kind of kept in contact over Facebook. You know, going oh, getting into your 30s, things start happening <laughs> and it's just a little different. Um, your metabolism slows down and it's, it gets even harder. So I went to, started going to the gym. I was going to the gym all the time and I didn't see too much progress and it was just taking a lot away from my son. And I was a single mom for a long time too. Um, just recently remarried and then he has a daughter too. So, oh, okay. you know, so our kids congratulations. are That's together. Exciting. And yeah, I totally, I totally get it about the thirties, like a little bit of knee pain when you get up and all, up and down off the floor to play with your kids. And you're like, wait a second, I'm only in my thirties. Is that supposed to happen? That didn't happen in my twenties. Anyway, that just made me laugh. Yeah. That's so true. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so I was talking, I just, I guess I just asked Jackie about it one day and she was like, yeah, I, all this told me about beach body and all this stuff. And I ordered some, I did a clean week. That's what I did first. Okay, so I'm going to stop you for one second. Sorry. When you say I asked Jackie about it, how did you know to ask her? Did you see on social media she was doing a lot with health and wellness? Yep. Yes? Yep. So you, That's all it you took. Found her on, so you had worked with her before and you saw her post something about health and wellness. So you reached out to yep. her and you said, hey, what are you doing? Because going to the gym yep. on your own wasn't necessarily working. Right. And so go ahead. She was, I mean, you can do the stuff at, at home and it's so much easier than paying for extra daycare and feeling guilty because you already put your kid in daycare all day. And then after work, you're going to put them in daycare again. It, that, it just wasn't something I cared to continue to do. It was too much. Yeah. No, that makes total sense. So I love this about you because it's very different from the other ladies where their hesitation or fear with joining the team, you reached out to Jackie for health and wellness, but then, you know, what was the conversation like about coaching, about joining the team? It was kind of funny because I didn't know that I could, I didn't know that I could be a coach. So <laughs> she, 
she was like, well, you can do a discount and you can be a discount coach and you can join that way. And I was like, how come you never told me about this? I would have done that from the start. <laughs> and she was like, I didn't know you're interested. Now that is funny. Uh, yeah. Jackie, silly Jackie. That's awesome. She's not silly. She's actually quite fabulous. And I love your guys' job. When she, whenever she says her job title, I'm like, okay, sister, you know, take it back a step there, Miss Fancy Pants. Cause I think her job so like <laughs> sounds so fancy and, you know, working in that world is just really cool. Um, it is. Yeah. Super fun. Right. So what, um, so you were excited. You were excited about the opportunity to save some money on your Shakeology, to save some money on other products potentially down the road. And then yep. did you become curious about the opportunity to help other people? Um, I was, you know, that is a little bit more scary to me is helping other people and trying to be an inspiration to other people. Because, again, you worry about the judgments. People are judging you. And I thought, well, I'm not fit. Why would anybody follow me or let me be their coach if I'm not fit myself? Yeah. And Jackie told me, she was like, you don't have to be fit to do this. There are so many people that are on a journey, and it's just where you are on your journey at the time. And you'll, you'll get there, and they'll get there, but you have to put in the work. Absolutely. That's, I love that. Perfect advice, Jackie. I think that fear is a real fear a lot of people have that, oh, who am I to coach other people, right? Or I've never worked out or I'm not, you know, I'm not into health and wellness or fitness. I don't have any certifications, anything like that. But with coaching, it's so different because with coaching, it's really more about coaching relationships. You know, we, we as coaches show our own life. You know, it's a life to life relationship. If our life relates to yours. So me being a mom to two little kids and working part time, but being a part time stay at home mom and then working from home part time. There's a lot of different things that people might relate to in my story. And that starts a conversation in a relationship. And then they trust me to help them with their health and wellness because I'm doing it. And I'm showing that if I can do it, then it's proof that they can too. Right. That doesn't right. mean I have to be a fitness superstar star, or have a six pack. I'm neither. Right? right. And so for you, like you were saying, you didn't feel super fit. So maybe you were nervous that people would be like, oh, why would I work out with you? But at the same time, you're living your own best life. That's what people need to see. I don't think people yes. really want to follow the perfect shiny fitness superstar that looks like a model in every picture. Right. I think people appreciate yeah. health and wellness and fitness for sure. And if that's how people look, I, I appreciate that. They're, I'm not judging people who look like that. But I think people who really want to start making small changes who haven't yet are looking more for people who have a real life situation where, you know, they see the mom in her sweatpants in her basement doing jumping jacks with her baby crawling around her feet. You know, that's that's more like, oh, well, she can do that. So can I. Versus just getting yeah. started and seeing someone who looks like a perfect model, you know? So I yeah. love that you decided to embrace that and say, okay, then maybe, yes, I can do this too. Right. right. So tell us a little bit about how you're like, how, so how long have you been signed up now as a coach? I, I think two years. Two years. I love it. I think. And so how has being a part of Team Fireflies or being a part of the world of coaching has made your life more positive, better, what's changed for the good? So I like to donate blood and donate as, as often as I can. My goal is to give back tenfold what I accepted. Oh. So I had a postpartum hemorrhage when I had Ethan, oh. my son, and had to accept six units of blood. So I, it's my goal to give back at least 60 units of blood. That's amazing. So I'm, I'm at about 25 ish, I want to say so far, but so I have a long way to go. Um, but it, I noticed that every, I was going and I, my blood pressure was creeping up and they're like, Oh, your blood pressure is a little high. And I'm like, what? I'm not, I'm not overweight. Like, why would it, I didn't understand why it would be high yeah. or not high, but they were like, well, you might want to, look into that if that continues 
So I noticed it over the years and I'm like, that's, that's kind of strange. Um, but after I did 80 day obsession, it resolved itself. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> Blood pressure is fine. Oh yeah. That's not surprising at all. We have so many people on our team who've gotten off of medications because they've decided to do an at home program or start drinking Shakeology or both. And that's life changing. Yeah. That saves you money. That saves you years of your life not being on a medication. You know, that's a big deal. And so think about it. If you hadn't started this journey and you were just like, oh, I'm okay. My life's okay. I'll just keep going down the road. I'm going down. Your blood pressure could have gotten worse and worse and worse. You could have ended up on medication. Maybe it could have been yeah. to a point where you couldn't donate blood anymore. And that dream of yours would have been ended, which not to right. be all doom and gloom, but I mean, there's both ends, right? You chose this end of health and wellness and you keep moving towards that, which is awesome. I yep. love that. Congratulations. Thank you. That's a big deal. I thought when you said that I was like brainstorming, like you should do like a donate blood group where you're like, you know, how many, how many um, people can we get to donate blood within one week? or something like that would just like a fun push, like share that story about what happened and say it's a goal of yours. And this is something people really need and more people need to give blood, that kind of thing. Yeah, that's a cause I definitely believe yeah, in. Just a little off, off topic, but really cool too. And as coaches, I know we believe in helping people in all kinds of ways. And I bet there are some coaches who would be happy to help you reach your um, goal of 60. So Anyway, any any final thoughts or anything you'd like to share with anyone who's watching tonight who might be hesitant to join as a coach? Um, I, I know everyone in my life that I, you know, like a lot, the major thing has been um, how expensive. They're like, oh, it's really expensive. And I loved how Sarah put it and how she, like, it replaced a meal. Like, it literally just, I took it out of my grocery budget and it replaced it straight up replaced it i drink it every day i thought i'd get sick of it like the same flavor but i love it i love crazy? drinking the same thing every day i've been drinking it for six years and i'm always like oh same recipe same recipe still tastes great same one <laughs> love it and you and taste fatigue is a real thing and i'm amazed sometimes that it it hasn't really kicked in yet but no you're absolutely right it does replace a meal every single day and vitamins and minerals. So if you're just somebody who has that cupboard or counter lined with like vitamin this, vitamin that, vitamin this, multivitamin this, complex whatever, Shakeology has so much in of all of that in it as well and a great balance of it. So that would be a money saver to go along. And you don't have to worry about it. Right. And it's a meal. It's, it's easy. Right? You have to take yeah. pills and cook for yourself. You just blend your shake and you can take it in the car, take it on the go, drink it while you're feeding your kids, which is what I do yeah. after time. <laughs> and I, ha I have no problem with my iron content when I donate blood either. Yeah. No problems. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. Okay. It's so fun. I could chat all night, but... Um, I definitely respect your time and I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for being willing to be interviewed. Um, and it was so fun to actually get to meet you and get to know you a little bit more. So thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Have a great night. Bye. You too. Bye. All right. Oh, so many great stories from those four ladies on this team. What's next? So if you're watching and you were invited by a coach on Team Fireflies, or even if you are someone who jumped on during the interviews and you weren't invited by somebody, please reach out. Our team needs more people. Our team wants more people because we believe in health and wellness. We believe that everyone has more potential within themselves. Like Sarah said, it's waiting for you. It's waiting for you to find it. And that potential is there. And we see it in you if you've been invited. And everyone deserves to be healthy. And like I said with the example about spending money and taking the time for yourself earlier, you know, when you're 80 and you look back, you will never regret taking the time for yourself, taking the time to be healthy, spending the money to feel good while you were younger, while you were busy in life, right? That's when we should want to feel our best versus being 80 and looking back and saying, gosh, if only I had tried, 
What if I had trusted her when she invited me? I wonder how my life could have been different. That won't feel as good, right? As if saying, you know what? I don't know what to expect. I am a little scared or nervous, but I am going to jump in with both feet because this opportunity is the real deal and I will get healthier and I will have more friends and I will have more fun and we will do fun book clubs and this team offers so much. So please reach out to whoever invited you tonight and let them know um, when we can expect you to be a part of the team, hopefully, right? And please, if you have any questions or further comments, you can absolutely post below or message any of the coaches that you heard from tonight. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Have an amazing night, and hopefully we'll see you in Team Fireflies very soon.